The color of our skin is one of the most obvious superficial differences among humans. People have allowed it to be the reason for hatred and division. Perhaps a deeper understanding of the factors that cause skin color would help us see our commonalities more clearly. Let's examine these and other key factors that determine skin color now. To be precise, there is only one class of biological substance that contributes to skin color, namely the class of biological pigments. Biological pigments are substances produced by living organisms that have a color resulting from selective color absorption. That is, biological pigments absorb specific wavelengths of light and reflect others. The reflected wavelengths include the colors we see. The skin is a cutaneous tissue membrane composed of epithelial cells in the superficial epidermis and connective tissue of the deeper dermis. There are pigments that influence skin color found in both of these layers. Some of the pigments of the epidermis are produced there, while others are absorbed from circulating blood vessels of the dermis beneath. For example, carotenoids, also called tetraterpenoids, are yellow, orange, and red organic pigments that are produced by plants and algae as well as several bacteria and fungi. These carotenoids give the characteristic color to plant structures, such as pumpkins, carrots, corn, tomatoes, and daffodils. And also in animals such as canaries, flamingos, salmon, lobster, shrimp, and aphids. Humans and such animals just listed are largely incapable of synthesizing their own carotenoids and actually obtain them through their diet. Carotenoids absorbed from the diet can circulate in the blood, leak out from capillaries in the dermis, and diffuse through the basement membrane of the skin into epithelial cells of the epidermis. These carotenoids can thus influence skin color. Eating a lot of carrots can actually cause the skin of light-skinned individuals to turn orange. Carotene can be metabolized to vitamin A, which is required for the normal maintenance of epithelial tissues and is also required for the synthesis of photoreceptor pigments in the eye, namely retinol. Thus, if you are ever told that eating carrots is good for your eyes, now you understand why that is true. While carotenoids are absorbed from our diet and delivered to the epidermis via blood vessels, a pigment that is synthesized by cells of the epidermis is the pigment melanin. In Module 5.1, we were introduced to the various layers of epithelial cells found in the epidermis of skin. 90% of the cells there are keratinocytes. There are, however, numerous specialized cells, such as the dendritic cells of the stratum spinosum and touch and tactile receptors located near the stratum basale. One group of specialized cells we highlighted in Module 5.1 were melanocytes. These pigment-producing cells are found sandwiched between the cells of the stratum basale and produce melanin, a major factor in determining skin color. Melanin is actually a broad term for a group of natural pigments found in most organisms. Melanin is produced, in part, from the amino acid tyrosine. There are three basic types of melanin, two of which are most important here in our discussion of skin color, namely eumelanin and melanin. The most common type is eumelanin, of which there are two types, a brown eumelanin and a black eumelanin. melanin a red-yellow pigment, on the other hand, is largely responsible for the color of blonde and red hair. Melanocytes manufacture and store melanin within small intracellular vesicles called melanosomes. These vesicles are transferred to the epithelial cells of the stratum basale, coloring the entire epidermis. Melanocyte melanin production is initiated by and slowly increases in response to sunlight exposure. Their melanin production activity peaks around 10 days after initial exposure. Freckles are small pigmented spots that appear on the skin of pale-skinned individuals. Freckles represent areas of greater than average melanin production. They tend to be most abundant on surfaces that are exposed to the sun, such as the face and arms. Lentigos, or lentigos, are similar to freckles, but have regular borders and contain abnormal melanocytes. Senile lentigos, or liver spots are variably pigmented areas that develop on exposed skin in older individuals with pale skin. The ratio of melanocytes to basal carotinocytes ranges between 1 to 4 or 1 in 20 depending on the region of the body. The skin covering most areas of the body has approximately 1,000 melanocytes per square millimeter. The cheeks, forehead, nipples, and genital region have about 2,000 melanocytes per square millimeter. People of all skin colors produce both eumelanin and phalomelanin.
the differences in skin pigmentation among individuals are due to the amount of each type produced and its delivery to the superficial cells of the epidermis. To further clarify, melanosomes travel within processes of melanocytes and are transferred intact to about 40 basal keratinocytes on average. The transfer of the melanin colors the keratinocyte temporarily until the melanosomes are destroyed as they fuse with lysosomes. In individuals with pale skin, the transfer of pigments takes place in the stratum basale and in the stratum spinosum. The cells of the more superficial layers lose their pigmentation over time. In darker skinned people, the melanosomes are larger, containing more pigment, and more numerous, and the transfer may occur in the stratum granulosum as well, making skin pigmentation darker. Even people with albinism have a normal abundance and distribution of melanocytes. However, their melanocytes are unable to produce melanin. Sunlight contains significant amounts of ultraviolet radiation. A small amount of UV radiation is beneficial because it stimulates the synthesis of vitamin D3 in the epidermis, a subject matter we'll examine further in Module 5.3. Too much ultraviolet radiation, however, produces immediate effects of mild or even serious burns. The role of melanin in the epidermis is a protective role. Melanin prevents skin damage by absorbing UV radiation before it reaches the layers of the epidermis and deeper dermis. Within epidermal cells, melanin concentrates around the nuclear envelope. There it shades the nucleus and absorbs UV radiation before it can damage nuclear DNA. Despite the presence of melanin, long-term damage can result from repeated exposure to sunlight even in dark-skinned individuals. Over time, cumulative UV damage to the skin can harm fibroblasts, impairing maintenance of the dermis. The result is premature wrinkling. In addition, Skin cancers can result from chromosomal damage in stem cells of the stratum basale or in melanocytes. We will also discuss the topic of skin cancers in Module 5.3. Returning to the role of pigments in skin color, another important biological pigment that influences skin color is hemoglobin. Our red blood cells are packed with millions of copies of the protein hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a pigment protein that combines oxygen and carbon dioxide. When bound by oxygen, oxyhemoglobin is bright red. Thus, Given that blood vessels are found in the dermis just beneath the epidermis, depending on the amount of blood flow and the oxygen concentration of that blood, dermal circulation can ultimately influence skin color. If those vessels dilate or widen, the red tones become much more pronounced. For example, skin becomes flushed and red when body temperature rises because the superficial blood vessels dilate so that the skin can act like a radiator and lose heat. Or when we are shy or embarrassed or angry Dermal circulation might increase in the face, causing blushing. The role of dermal circulation influencing skin color is also observed due to lack of blood flow. For example, when the vessels are temporarily constricted, as when you are frightened, the skin becomes relatively pale. During a sustained reduction in circulatory supply, the blood in the skin loses oxygen to surrounding tissues and takes on a darker red tone. Seen from the face, the skin then takes on a bluish coloration called cyanosis. In individuals of any skin color, cyanosis is most apparent in areas of thin skin, such as the lips, ears, or beneath the fingernails. Cyanosis can also be a response to extreme cold, or a result of circulatory or respiratory disorders, such as heart failure or asthma. Because the skin is easy to observe, changes in the skin's appearance can be useful in diagnosing diseases that primarily affect other body systems. Several diseases can produce secondary effects on skin color and pigmentation. Let's mention a few. In jaundice, the liver is unable to excrete bile, so a yellowish pigment accumulates in body fluids. In advanced stages, the skin and whites of the eyes turn yellow. Some tumors affect the pituitary gland and result in the secretion of large amounts of melanocyte-stimulating hormone. This hormone causes a darkening of the skin, as if the individual has an extremely bronze tan. In Addison's disease, the pituitary gland secretes large quantities of adrenocorticotropic hormone which is structurally similar to melanocyte-stimulating hormone. Thus, the effect of adrenocorticotropic hormone on skin color is similar to that of melanocyte-stimulating hormone. We will learn more of these hormones in Module 10. Finally, in vitiligo, or vitiligo, individuals lose their melanocytes causing white patches on otherwise normal skin. The condition develops in about 1% of the population. Its incidence increases among individuals with thyroid gland disorders, Addison's disease, or several other disorders. It is suspected that vitiligo develops when the immune defenses malfunction and antibodies attack normal melanocytes. The primary problem with vitiligo is cosmetic, especially for individuals with darker pigmented skin. 
Thus, in summary, biological pigments are the primary influence on skin color. These pigments may be produced in the epidermis, such as melanin by melanocytes of the stratum basale, or the pigments may be absorbed from the diet, travel in the blood, and leak into the epidermis from the dermis, as with the carotenoids. Finally, because blood cells contain the pigment hemoglobin, depending on the oxygen concentration and dilation or constriction of blood vessels beneath the skin, dermal blood circulation can also influence skin color. Join me in Module 5.3 as we explore further both the beneficial and detrimental effects of sunlight on skin.